See, service sector, so shopping malls and couriers, swiggies and all, they will thrive as long as people have money. The big problem is from where the money is coming into the economy. What is that which is sellable with us, where we can earn some premium by exporting it? So far, IT was doing that job. IT was able to have influx of some money in our economy. And that was sustaining our economy also in a big way. Otherwise, okay, you can do mining, you can sell ores, but that is a low end, a low premium product where you don't get so much and your resources and environment is depleting very fast. It is in national interest to do higher value adding work. For lesser effort, you are able to earn more. So we have to identify such sectors, such segments. Gone are the days when people used to earn by way of having a secured domain. They used to become an expert and then sit in ivory tower and earn based on that expertise. All those fortresses are falling. People are able to poach into all those citadels very easily nowadays. <laughs> Thanks to internet again. Though wisdom cannot be downloaded, but knowledge can be downloaded. Information can be downloaded, definitely. There is a requirement of interdisciplinary mindset. You have to know more than one field. See, thanks to automation, you have those IVRs, which are bloody irritating. You just keep on listening the recorded messages. Now, I think somewhere automation has been put wrongly. It doesn't deserve automation there. So there is a lot more room for having people behind that call <laughs> to answer your query in a friendly manner, adaptively. Hello friends, I'm Avinash Khare, your host, and I welcome you to this series, Technocrat Talks. In this series, we will be dwelling on our blind spots, which have shackled our thinking and which have preconditioned our perceptions into a certain template. We have been suffering because of that. This we are doing through application of engineering sense and cold logic. Welcome to this analytical discussion. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe. Please press the bell icon to get the notifications. If you like the talk, please like it and share it with your friends so that we increase the community of like-minded, curious minds to take the movement forward. Without much ado, let us start today's talk. Friends, today we are going to discuss in this episode an issue that is close to heart of uh, all the middle class families. Actually, it's their biggest worry. What their next generation boys and girls are going to do to make an honorable livelihood and to have an assured life of earning. Okay. Now, unfortunately, the jobs which were there, the government jobs, have been on decline. The 9 to 5 jobs have evaporated away, many of them, thanks to digitalization. And for now, people have taken refuge in IT sector, IT, ITS sector and service sector. But how long even that will thrive is a big question mark. So it's a big issue of what would be the nature of jobs for the generation to come. Can you describe the impact of digitization and automation on traditional jobs? Well, two, three decades back when I was a student in all capital cities, urban centers, an average middle class breadwinner used to go to some XYZ office and used to do nine to five jobs. And there were plenty of such jobs available in cities. And that is what has laid down our culture in those days and our lifestyle. Okay. So those were all comfortable jobs where paperwork was involved. The schedule was fixed. Postings used to happen once in a while, but it was lifestyle was quite assured. And after retirement, there used to be pension and all the benefits. And once somebody gets employed, he used to only retire. Okay. So there was a kind of assurance through the life. And what were those jobs? Well, there were accountants, there were auditors, there were 
clerks, there were receptionists, there were counter clerks, you know, so many of them. In railway reservation office, there used to be reserving clerks, so many of them, okay. An army of them used to be there literally, okay. But thanks to computerization, now everything has become online. And so, the number of jobs required have shrunk. And it's not entirely a problem, it's also a plus point in the sense that formerly if there were 10 clerks, they used to sit on 10 tables and every work had to flow through all 10 of them. They used to get connected in series instead of sharing the load in parallel. I mean, I am giving analogy of Ohm's law, electrical circuit. All the resistances get connected in series. So, that used to throttle the throughput immensely. And for end user like common public, it was a nightmare to get anything done used to take so many chakras to the offices and then paper used to move slowly after a lot of prodding and persuasion. Now thankfully with digitalization that problem has been solved. Now things can be done online, payments can be made online, receipts can be done online, shopping can be done online, bookings can be done online. So there is much less need to go and stand somewhere in a queue. But the result is that so many jobs have been lost to the middle class. Talking of business, you see in 90s, how many uh, businesses mushroomed which were doing uh, PCO telephone booth for example, Xerox parlor or you had uh, that uh, video cassette library, audio cassette parlor. Now these technologies have come, they have transformed so much, so fast. You just see how many times entertainment technology has changed? Well, in 60s there used to be gramophone, record player, radiogram rather, okay. Then came your uh, spool type of tape recorder, then came cassette, audio cassette, then came video cassette, then compact CD, VCD and now it is USB. So, so many technologies have transformed so fast. And we must give credit to our Indian public that how fast they have adopted these technologies and how fast they have changed, okay. They are often accused that they are not receptive to technology, but see how fast people have responded. And today to this uh, cell phone revolution which has happened, even the illiterate grandmothers know how to download, how to send SMS, how to send email, how to see WhatsApp. So, they have learnt it very fast. That is the reception to technology, that is the adaptivity towards technology that Indian public has displayed and it is commendable really. But having said that, it has taken toll of so many jobs. So many businesses which were there formerly are no longer there, okay. So, yes, digital revolution, electronics, automation has taken toll of many jobs. Talking of factories, when automation came, people advocated that, okay, so what if some jobs will be lost due to automation, but maybe we require more people in maintenance and we will always require people in quality control because quality is paramount, okay. But have so many maintenance jobs been created? Again, what has happened is not a negative thing, it is a positive thing that machines have become maintenance free. They have become so reliable <laughs> that you no longer require so many maintenance people as envisaged earlier, okay. And whatever is are there, they can be remotely maintained also nowadays. So those jobs have not happened, maintenance jobs have not happened as envisaged in lieu of jobs which were cut. Quality jobs, formerly the mindset was that uh, quality control has to be done at the end of the line, okay. But now end of the line has been replaced by a new paradigm and that paradigm is quality by design. So you plan the equipment, you plan the process in such a way that, so that it automatically produces quality. So you don't have to have so much of inspection. So even quality jobs have not happened as much as it was thought initially. Now when so many jobs have got cut for the middle class, 
thankfully it boom came so all the middle class young people they gravitated towards it side fine it gave them uh, honorable employment a blue a white collar employment and a decent life for a while but then please understand that any software development is a development activity and any design and development activity is a one time activity you do a project only once you don't keep on doing it perennially so it does not give you a lasting employment it will give employment for a while but once the development is done the project is over the party is over and that's what happens and you see how many features that we could imagine or think or wish to be there in cell phone by far all are already there what more you could wish same with laptop what more features can one wish by far it is saturating we have already done all the development that was required so now i'm going further what new development will happen is a big question mark is it required is there a market appetite or a requirement for that so where will those jobs go they are going to go one day i am discounting the factor that you may have a software which is intelligent enough ai driven which will write which will do coding by itself okay even if that doesn't happen for now but then this is definitely happening that the requirement is saturating fast okay so where will be the scope for new jobs is a big question mark and it has to be planned for it has to be the policy wise geared up for you have to have the right mindset the right competency the right physical and mental preparation to be able to embark on those kind of new jobs okay so it's a big big question mark and nobody is absolutely clear of what is going to happen what will be the shape of future to come so that's why this discussion becomes more important so that we start thinking at least how do you perceive the argument that technology creates more jobs than it eliminates now as i said that has not quite happened it has eliminated jobs all right but it has not created jobs so far but going further technology will not create new jobs policy has to create new jobs and what do i mean by saying this see so far in technology growth we have been brutally ignoring the environmental sustainability concerns we have butchered our environment so what happens lot of e waste electronic junk lot of plastic waste assorted gets thrown gets dumped gets replaced by new on one hand we are blaming chinese for not supplying their rare earth metal for semiconductor industry so that we are suffering there on the other hand so much of e waste is scrapped and is polluting the environment okay now it's high time that policy wise an impetus is given to the recycling industry now that presents a big big opportunity rather than mining these rare earth materials afresh at high cost from god for second places in geography we can look at all these scrap as a resource it's only a matter of having the right affordable technology and scaling to make it economical but believe me it can be done all the waste plastic could be converted into diesel how do you like it could be used as fuel it is inflammable can you not burn plastic yes you can burn what is the chemical composition of plastic it's carbon hydrogen oxygen and sometimes nitrogen that's all it doesn't contain any poison it doesn't contain lead it doesn't contain mercury it doesn't contain arsenic as such 
it doesn't contain any poison for the environment or for the life living forms its only problem is that it will live forever and diamonds may or may not be forever or plastic is forever okay it's not biodegradable it does not decompose nowadays they are making some plastic which are also compostable which can be converted back into manure if you put it in a pit properly but then carbon hydrogen oxygen these are all organic matters it's not environment unfriendly it is just that they are so durable that nothing happens to it hmm? so the only option is you can either burn it or melt it and recycle it okay now all the inflammable oils or fuels are also made of carbon hydrogen oxygen it's a chemical process to transform this one into that provided we know how to do it and we are able to do it economically enough and we are able to do it at large scale we can do it now the biggest problem in this is that the all the waste is assorted all the waste is assorted it's mixed up so there are seven types of plastic plus thermoset plastic plus composites and all those are getting mixed up in scrap along with other waste now you can recycle something if it is isolated if for example you have all plastic bottles pet bottles only you can throw away the cap and melt the bottle and you can easily recycle but all other assorted waste is difficult to recycle for the simple reason that sorting out is a laborious manual work now that's what i am coming from that is the employment potential for the next generation for masses they can do segregation they could be segregation i will not call them laborers but then they can engage gainfully in segregation in collecting the correct type of plastic all type of similar plastics together all the ics together all the electronics together all the glassware together all the metals and all these individual things can easily be put in a furnace and recycled what is the big deal instead of mining which is equally unfriendly process it's not economical it's not friendly it's not ecologically sustainable instead of that you go in a circular economy of whatever trash you are throwing you recycle it so policy has to invest something in this one so that it creates employment potential for people to be able to recycle e waste plastic waste they can do plantation they can take care of green cover these are the jobs but so far we are not looking at these things as a job at all okay environment is the biggest concern today we have to be friendly and considerate towards environment and we have to invest something towards environment and that's where the potential is now if we don't do it tomorrow it will be a hell for us okay now this is the big avenue i see where new jobs could be created in technology in chemical technology in engineering in mechanical engineering also in electronics you know e waste is a very important source for reclaiming gold and silver all these ics contain cpu contains lot of gold it's a very attractive business in fact only thing is it has not been scaled up the problem is again segregation you just throw the laptop you just throw the cell phone along with battery now battery is another hazard okay but battery again all the lithium all the lead acid battery components from the used batteries you could always take away those elements again and use them for new batteries after chemical treatment 
instead of mining these things fresh and putting pressure on environment okay so it's a very big potential that is existing but yes technology alone will not do there it requires a policy push it requires uh, to make these businesses marketable so that is where some policy dictate has to come and as per policy you have to make these avenues more attractive to be followed by people once people start following it there will be law of uh, mass action and the cost will come down and you will be able to do it sustainably more easily so it will help environment it will give employment and it will improve our lives what future do you foresee for the service sector given the evolving job dynamics see service sector so shopping malls and couriers and you know swiggies and all they will thrive as long as people have money the big problem is from where the money is coming into the economy from where the money will come into the indian economy is the question what is that which is sellable with us where we can earn some premium by exporting it so that we pump some money in the economy because once there is a money pumped so far it was doing that job it was able to have influx of some money in our economy and that was sustaining our economy also in a big way right otherwise okay you can do mining you can sell ores but that is a low end product a low premium product where you don't get so much and your resources and environment is depleting very fast now it is in national interest to do higher value adding work which will fetch us more premium <laughs> and for lesser effort you are able to earn more okay so we have to identify such sectors such segments where we can put in our effort and money and we are able to get sustainable inflow of money into the economy because once there is inflow in the economy then everything all the service industry will thrive but if people don't have money how will real estate boom also people don't have money to buy houses so real estate cannot boom right so we have to find some such businesses some such job openings where we are able to create wealth now wealth can be created either by mining and you get a gold mine or something or you get an oil well or if you are a professor and writer you can create uh, content which is knowledge is also wealth we can let us recognize that let us give it devil its due <laughs> so knowledge is also wealth in its own right so we respect knowledge and we do something towards generating knowledge information okay and any other thing which we are able to sell at high premium and we are able to have inflow of forex yes it's a value add it's a pumping money into our economy so it will going to improve the life livelihood of everybody what skills should a youth focus on to keep pace with the job market evolution see gone are the days when people used to earn by way of having a secured domain they used to become an expert and then sit in ivory tower and earn based on that expertise now those days are going because all those fortresses are falling people are able to poach into all those citadels very easily nowadays <laughs> thanks to internet again okay so any knowledge can be downloaded very easily though wisdom cannot be downloaded but knowledge can be down information can be downloaded definitely so the domain boundaries have become pervious and there is a requirement of interdisciplinary mindset you have to know more than one field you cannot be just pure mechanical engineer pure die designer pure 
machine designer it doesn't work like that because everything even cutting tool will have electronics it will have nowadays uh, some device which will talk to cloud directly <laughs> okay so electronics is permeating into anything and everything which means that uh, the next generation mechanical engineers have to also know electronics they have to know mechatronics they have to know software of course software everybody has to know so basically the mindset is that they have to start in multiple domains and it is said that okay the in future going further there will be niche jobs but then that niche will keep on changing so you have to be rip geared up to change your niche as required okay so the accent is going to be more on creativity rather than rote learning rather than uh, doing lot of theory hmm? you have to have more creativity more agility more adaptivity you can't go by rigid rules any longer you have to be flexible and you have to catch up with time older generation people used to say that old was gold everything which was evolved over the ages must have some sanctity so they used to follow those design rules those algorithms those you know mindset and those paradigms also but now things are changing so fast that you can't go by past empirical knowledge anymore things have changed beyond recognition they have changed so fast so much that all that knowledge has become quite obsolete and out of date so you have to catch up with times okay now for example what is the use of uh, doing gauge repeatability and gauge reproducibility and msa when all the inspections are getting automated they are done by cmm there are no gauges now people used to say engineering drawing is very important but nowadays you are dealing with cad model so all the game has changed so you have to be mentally ready to change with the game okay so whatever that calls for that has to be done so nowadays is okay you should have in depth knowledge in some field plus you have to know lot many things beyond that we cannot incarcerate yourself in your own domain so going further that's going to happen in a even bigger way like uh, artificial intelligence machine learning industry 4 industry 5 all those going to invade everywhere and one has to deal with those things as they come okay a lot of adaptivity is required will be required lot of dynamics would happen things cannot be predictable things cannot work based on old rules so you have to learn new rules very fast and practice it before they become obsolete can you explain your statement jobs must add value and not cost delay or complexity yeah see formerly if you see the traditional jobs the example that i cited earlier that 10 set clerk sitting on 10 tables sitting to delay uh, getting added in series that was one nightmare which was there additional other things which were there that uh, there were many jobs because of complexity you make your system your rules so bloody complicated that it requires an expert to decipher it requires a chartered accountant to file your income tax return for example right now things should be friendly and thankfully that is happening that has happened and it's happening very fast thanks to digitization again okay so all those jobs which were secure because of so called complexity driven expertise so people used to be expert once they mastered that complexity alternatively people used to hoard information and based on that hoarded information they used to parade themselves as expert now even that is not possible because everything is available on internet hmm. so all those jobs all those citadels have broken already 
So going further, it will not work like that. Hmm? Going further, it is not going to work like that. And yeah, so going further, people have to be much more productive, much more effective, much more objective, much more dynamic, much more connected, much more down to earth. How should youngsters prepare to easily switch across different domains in their career? Well, in many good institutions nowadays, they are giving flexibility. Formerly, what used to happen that somebody in a mechanical engineering or electrical engineering or electronics used to be restricted. The choice of subjects that one could take was very, very restricted. There were some optional electives, but then those were very restricted. That list was very respect, uh, list restricted. Even if the list looked very attractive, many of those options were practically not available. They were just there for namesake in the list, but there was no staff member who could teach those. Like for example, biomedical instrumentation used to be there in electronics, but there was no staff member who could teach it. So there used to be many such electives which were it was well known that these are just for namesake, these are not to be taken. There is nobody who can teach this. So their choice of subjects that was there was very, very restricted. Okay. But now, many good institutions like IITs are giving a free field for choosing the elective. So a mechanical engineer could choose a subject from finance in final year elective. He or she could choose economics, he or she could choose management, he or she could choose electronics, software, any, any subject, artificial intelligence. So nowadays that horizon is opening up. So youngsters have a choice. So depending on their liking, they can take a right combination of subjects. But they should make sure that they are not married to one particular isolated domain. Like suppose somebody does industrial hydraulics. He or she cannot do without knowing little bit of electronics and PLCs. Okay. So it goes with that. So the choice of subjects plus the choice of projects which they do and even the project teams must be interdisciplinary. So in your project team, there could be one electronics, one software guy, one mechanical engineer. Now like that, if they work as a team, they would get exposure to multiple domains. Okay. And that would prepare them for future life. Okay. So they will be agile enough. They will be flexible enough. They will be informed enough about various domains so that they are able to switch on switch jobs very easily. Are any mentorships happening in these institutions? Mentorship happens, but then those mentorships are in a particular domain. Because mentors themselves are not interdisciplinary. So unless mentors are themselves interdisciplinary, that will not happen. So maybe you can have more than one mentor. Maybe you can have a pool of mentor. You don't have one project guide you have two or three project guides which are from different domains. So something like that has to be thought of. Even if it doesn't happen formally, at least informally, they can make sure that they have somebody to guide from the other domains. What's the future of creative jobs like writing and entertainment in the tech era? Well, writing and entertainment, entertainment is already saturating. And writing, one can write books, but then nobody reads nowadays. People don't have patience. Maybe they will read a small article which can be read in a minute. Not more than that. More than that, attention span is not there. Right? People want to see short videos, one or two or three minute max. Short articles, one paragraph only, or just one profound statement. But that's not serious reading, that's just time pass. Now for serious reading, of course, you require uh, in-depth knowledge, you have to go in detail and content has to be created. Now creative job actually, thanks to AR, VR, MR, 
augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality and all, which is coming in a big way in industrial parlance. Now one has to create a lot of content for those things. That content creation will be a big job requirement. Content creation for web. Organizing the data, like I said about the environment, there is also a lot of clutter in the data. To make the data clutter free will be a job. Plus another job which I foresee, there is a scope, lot of scope. See, thanks to automation, you have those IVRs, which are bloody irritating. You keep on dialing, dial 0, dial 1, dial 9. But the person doesn't come to talk to you. You just keep on listening the recorded messages. Now, I think somewhere automation has been put wrongly. It doesn't deserve automation there. So, there is a lot more room for having people behind that call to answer your query in a friendly manner, adaptively. Otherwise, IVRs, I mean, people are getting sick of those technologies. Okay. So, there is a lot of scope there for new jobs. To have this one ITES, IT enabled services, call centers, those jobs will be there. Those jobs must be there. Okay. Creative jobs will be there. Now, after industry 4, the next uh, thing being talked is industry 5. Now, industry 4 was advocating all automation. Industry 5 says that there should be human touch in everything. So, human is required everywhere for human touch, for human adaptivity, for human creativity. Because all being said about AI ML, AI ML computer cannot do Shero Shairi that I can tell you. Not as beautifully as a human share would do. So, that is something where machines cannot replace human being. And machines need not replace human being. Because if machines start replacing human being in 100%, suppose AI ML evolves so much that it can do whatever human brain can do, then your machine will become as moody, as, as temperamental as human being. So, do we want that? So, the answer to that is let machines be machines, let human be human. Let machines adapt to human beings. But human beings have to do their own job. Machines will not do their job. Machines will do machines job. They will do routine repetitive work, unsafe work, okay, hazardous work. They will work very fast with great brute force. Now all those will be done by machine, but the intellect, the judgment, the diagnosis has to be with human brain. Right. So, wherever there is a hand skill, there is a intelligence required, there is a training required. For example, I mean you don't go to a restaurant where Robo is a cook, surely. Because whatever a Robo will do, will be a mass produced low end product. Like those cheaper mass produced biscuits. But what sells in a premium is handmade butter cookies, handmade wines, handmade silk, handmade Banarsi sari. Those are always going to be there. So those jobs are always going to be there. Some other jobs which are always going to be there are of course jobs in uniform. The positional jobs, the district collectors have to be there. <laughs> now judiciary has been falling inadequate in the sense that they are not able to match up the capacity of criminals. So, there is a lot of room for judiciary to grow. That is the opportunity for jobs, for the legal fraternity. Okay. You require so many more lawyers, so many more judges, so many more courts. Not depending on district organization, but depending on the rate of crime. Right? So, there will be scope for those kind of jobs. All the positional jobs, all the teaching jobs are going to be there. Of course, teachers and professors of the future may use YouTube videos for teaching. They may use AR, VR, 
but then teaching will have to be a human activity always because for, uh, for teaching algebra to johnny you have to know algebra but more than that you have to know johnny machine will not know johnny right so that is where the human intervention should always be there and will always be there you cannot automate otherwise it will become like ivr chemistry ke naya lesson ke liye nine dabaiye it will become like that now do we want it like that so those jobs will always be there how can we shift from recipe based learning or more like template based learning to creative innovation focused learning now what i call as recipe based learning is uh, you know you see some sometimes people come for training and we do lot of theoretical stuff lot of profound stuff deeply academic stuff and in the end people say in their feedback but i have not learned how to fix my machine when it breaks down so the training is not helping me to do my job that's the thing now if you compare these kind of training with the kind of videos which you see on internet for recipes chef say malai tikka banane ki vidhi you watch that video and you are able to prepare a malai tikka yourself now that's what i call as recipe based learning so learning or knowledge is designed to make you do your specific job only okay that is what i call as recipe based training you want to design a motor okay do this 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 a motor will be designed that is recipe based hmm? now recipe based training will is not going to take us far because things are changing so fast imagine somebody who had done recipe based training for let us say tape recorder now where does that man go right things are changing so fast so you can not depend on recipe based learning it has to be more open it has to be more generic it has to be more open ended it has to be it has to make you think it has to develop the right mindset and attitude to learn okay it has to develop the right habits in you to learn new things well new things you have to learn you can't say bhai itna padha diya itna bas ho gaya ye kar lo ho jayega it doesn't work like that it will not work like that going further increasingly because whenever i talk to academics they always complain sir what do we do so many new technologies are coming industry tells us that we should give training in all these things we ourselves no don't, don't know those things now even supposing we learn those things and start teaching we are sure that by the time students will pass out those would become obsolete so what do we do and there is a real challenge because students are able to learn faster than professors through internet because they are more that savvy okay so professors find it difficult to address them them because they are much more informed with the recent knowledge so it's a challenge it's really a challenge in this changing world they have to keep pace with the change that's the only way can you elaborate on the shift from high volume to customization and higher value creation see if you see few decades back two three decades back in india you had limited choice of products on the road you had premier you had ambassador you had vespa you had lamretta those were the only choices which were available and the factories which produced these vehicles day in day out they used to churn out the same product for several years industries use special purpose machines and automation to churn out those products and by no means those were high end products those were low end low cost products meant for indian public for indian consumption who at that time what was thought that they could not afford anything better or anything costlier than that 
okay so those were the only products which were being mass produced and ditto for all the product segments you had limited choice and those products were mass produced so there was very big volume but very less variety and hardly any choice okay so we were operating in that mode when we started but then in 90s came the international market they get crashed into india and then we had plethora of choices and lot of variety and as a result now no single product ever touches those kind of volumes because there are so many variants there are so many uh, versions of same product also so now people want variety they need a change they want a wide choice and they want things to be customized they want exclusivity also now no lady would like to buy a sari which her neighbor would also wear one day <laughs> obviously so they are looking for some exclusivity now that brings in the need for customization so going further there will be more customization there will be more variety but lesser volume of each product gross volume will be more but for individual products the volume will not be so much and the lifetime will not be so much they will come and they will fade out very fast like those entertainment electronic stuff okay so they will come and they will go very fast hmm? now for that you require a production setup which has to be adaptive which has to be versatile which can quickly do setup change from one product to next product to next product okay and even expertise has to catch up like that the competency also has to go in that proportion in that way right so going further it will be more of uh, change change management more of creativity more of switching from x to y to z now that is going to happen more frequently so that's what i said that uh, recipe based learning cannot take us very far we have to have something which makes us more versatile which increases our bandwidth which enables us to do variety of jobs and various competencies which are adjacent to our domain we should have some knowledge of those what role do you see for vocational education in shaping future job readiness now usually vocational training when we say we are talking of skill development which is uh, at the most iti or diploma level competence is required for those things yes those are going to be there but again as i said they have to have some broad bending and some interdisciplinary element like a mechanic cannot be a pure mechanic the mechanic has also to know a little bit of electronics okay so skill and vocational trainings have to be geared up they have to make the person interdisciplinary a machine operator should know little bit about machine maintenance as well because it is required from industry tpm is required so operator is supposed to know about the machine about the equipment he need not be only process competent he is also to be equipment competent and to some extent nowadays they are also saying that he should be design competent also to suggest some improvements in the design in the dfm aspect and stuff like that yes so vocational trainings are going to be there they should be there because they cut all the frills and make the person directly usable on shop floor okay so yes those will be required and specialized vocations will be required interdisciplinary vocations will be required yes that's the way forward since liberalization the economy has grown but jobs haven't what could be the main reasons growth of economy how do you work out from gdp now how do you work out gdp is a question suppose there are number of companies some are suppliers some are oem some are super oem and stuff like that okay so in the entire value chain you are adding everybody's turnover turnover from company 
company two, company three, company four, company ten. Now all these ten companies are in series. Suppose the tenth company at the end is making and selling a car. Now you will take the turnover of tenth company, the turnover of ninth company, the turnover of eighth company, turnover of first company, add all of them. But that's not correct because whatever nine companies have done is also factored in the tenth turnover. Right. So basically, you have to talk about. Not turnover, but value add. You have to talk about value add. So let us say second company. For what did they buy their material, and for how much they have sold that their material? What is their delta? That is their value add. You get my point. So that is the value add. So basically, if you take only value add. Then it will not look as attractive as it looks from other indices. Practically, you see that the number of people who used to be seen working on shop floor in different industries, that number has come down definitely, and it has come down in number of ways. The primary employees have shrunk. More of them are temporary or outsourced or subcontracted manpower. So two or three things have happened. Number of permanent jobs have come down. Number of temporary jobs may have gone up or may have remained the same. So some jobs which were permanent earlier have become temporary now. So the level of assurance that you were giving to the society has been diluted of providing employment. Okay, so now you have some 25 percent employees in house, 75 percent are flexi labor, which is subcontracted labor, which are cheap labor, who can be recruited and thrown, and there is no protection for them from the union or from anybody. Now that is what has become the order of the day. So in the end, the economy looks great. But it is jobless economy. People are not getting permanent employment as they used to get earlier. That level has come down, and there is no way it will catch up ever again. Because our problem is that we are exporting Indian products and Indian software and all that on the premise that it is lower cost as compared to. Others. Now, if cost is your sole USP, it's going to happen more and more. So, working for longer hours, working with fewer employee, and making them slog for longer hours—all this is going to go further up. Okay. Now, compare with some Western economy where people switch off at five o'clock, they switch off their mobile phone. As against that, our young men are slogging till midnight, just because you want to sell at lower cost, which gives us another direction that probably going further, we should not look for selling on cost proposition. We should be selling world class products at premium. That is the direction, strategic direction of growth that should take us there. So that we market something, which we sell at heavy premium, and we are able to get away with that, and still people are buying. There is a demand for that. Okay. So I'm sure we can do it. Certainly, in the matter of arts, craft, handicraft, we have been able to do it. Gems, jewelry, textiles, we have been able to do it. In engineering, why we should not be able to do it? A question mark, but then we can always do it. If we could do it for everything else, we could do here as well. Another thing is that there is a talk of uh, self-reliance and making everything in-house and unloading everything, cutting down imports. 
Now that is not going to happen frankly because we are in a world that is interconnected. Now today any product which we make for example machine tool or automation related product or electronics. How Indian is Indian is a big question. Suppose you take any Indian product. What is the Indian content in that Indian product? Servo motor, servo controller, CNC controller, robotic controller, HMI, electronics hardware, ICs, linear motion guideways, bearings. What is Indian? You find that there is hardly anything that is basically Indian. Which means that we have to learn to live in a connected world. Okay. So, we can focus on doing what we are best at doing. And that we should do and sell at high premium. For example, temperamentally Indians are good at building a house rather than making a brick. Let us accept that. Let us build a house. Let others do the brick. We decide that okay, others will do the brick. We don't do. We don't make semiconductor ICs. We make the higher end products. The system integration part we do. But we do it as a premium product, as something that will give us sustainable value from the international market. Okay. So, choose the domain where we are best, where we can be best and focus there instead of trying to run after too many things where we know we are not there. Okay. Now it's too late to catch up there will not be able to do most probably. So, let us go one step ahead instead and do things what we are able to do best. We are strong in making entertainment content, let us do that. But let us make it world class. Now, how many of our Bollywood stuff is world class is a question mark today. But it could become world class, why not? Certainly it can become. We have no doubt that uh, it can become world class easily. Okay. So let us focus there. Whatever we are good at doing, let us focus there. Well, with this, we have come to the end of today's talk. Please take this movement forward. Please share it with your friends. Open Mind is an engineer's workshop and our goal is to engineer our future. Please press the bell icon to get further notifications. Please like if you have liked the talk and please do let us have your feedback, your ideas, your comments, your suggestions. Hope to see you in the next talk, Technocrat Talks. Till then, be happy, enjoy. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>